Today on Airtel Touching Lives, we meet two people who prove that nothing is impossible if you put your mind to it. I mean, there's such a gap between some children who just probably have most of what they want and some children who have nothing. It, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling and it shouldn't happen. We were four in the car. I think he must have got scared or something. And that's all I could remember. I want to touch your life. I want to be the change. I'm going to shine my light. I'm going to make a difference. Touch your life. Be the change. Shine my light. And make a difference. You're the one. To make the world a much better place. Hello Nigeria and welcome to Airtel Touching Lives. My name is Wana and as you know, just like Airtel, I am committed to transforming lives. It is estimated that there are over 3 million internally displaced persons living in Nigeria and 70% of them are women and children. Now last year, Airtel Touching Lives contributed to the awareness and the cause. Remy Abere is an incredibly inspirational woman and you'll find out why. A few months ago, I attempted the unthinkable, to climb mountain Kilimanjaro. My name is Remy Abere, and I'm the founder of Climb with Remy. Basically, six women of a similar age, over 50, are climbing mountain Kilimanjaro to raise awareness to the plight of the women and children in the IDP camps all over Nigeria. IDP meaning internally displaced persons. And basically they're people who have been displaced by the Boko Haram war. I mean, women and children that have been forced to live in very small spaces under terrible conditions in little huts. You, 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 you don't want to imagine it. Words will fail me. No matter how brilliant the writer I am, words will fail me. It, it's really saddening because you see children that don't have clothes. The clothes they put on are all torn and dirty and um, they've got no shoes and they look mal malnourished and um, it's really sad. It's not, it's not something I can describe. You see kids, you see children, you see flies on children. I mean, there's such a gap between some children who just probably have most of what they want and some children who have nothing. It, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling and it shouldn't happen. Um, Etel really appreciates what you're doing and uh, we would like to support you with um, awareness to help raise funds for what you're doing for the IDPs um, all over the country. And um, we would also like to support you with 10 million Naira. Using climbing as a metaphor for overcoming adversity, her idea was to create awareness with her summit attempt. In early February 2016, together with four friends, they reached their goal, the top of Africa. Airtel did fulfill their, their promise. Um, they did do what they said they were going to do. They gave us a, a lot of support towards climbing the mountain. Um, so myself and, and uh, the other three women, we climbed the mountain last year in November. And it went a long way in supporting us climbing the mountain, helping create awareness for this cause, helping elicit donations, product donations from different companies to take to the women and children in the camp in um, Adamawa State. So yeah, I, we're, we're forever grateful to, to Airtel for this support and it was, it was uh, such a fan, fantastic effort on their part. Um, they are definitely leading the way for social change. 
Gretel, thank you very, very much. Without you, that wouldn't have been possible. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to go to the camps. Without you, the women and children would not be able to have those donations that we, we were able to, to collect, to collate. Without you, there are a lot of things that wouldn't have been possible. So thank you so much. You have been a huge support in this venture. More grease to your elbows. Thank you very much. A massive kudos to Remy and her friends for putting their lives on the line to create awareness on the lives of internally displaced persons. This is a message to all of us to keep staying our brother's keeper. Coming up after the break, we meet Ola Dimeji Adekunle. In 2007, a car accident changed his life forever. Welcome back to Airtel Touching Lives. Ola Dimeji Adekunle had it all. A thriving career, two healthy children, a wife, a family, a home. Everything was good. In 2007, before the accident, my life was extremely perfect. I was employed at an airline and married with two children. In a split second, everything changed. Before 2007, I was working as a trader while my husband was working with an hairline. I was um, aiming to become pilots and I've just been promoted to the senior cabin crew. Life was good because my husband was working with an hairline. I made myself, I'm a trader. So he's going to work, doing well. 2007, her life changed. He went for a wedding with his friend. It was in the morning when the accident happened. My friend who just waited, the groom there, he was the one who drove the car. We were four in the car. I don't know what just happened. We were coming, I think he must have got scared or something. And that's all I could remember. Some people came to my shop that day. Two elderly people came down to my shop and told, and told me that my husband is in hospital. Everyone in the vehicle had injury, but um, theirs were minor, not really serious. By the time I got to the hospital, I can't, I can't recognize him anymore. He's using oxygen to breathe. So and I called the doctor, please. Any, is there any, any hope? The doctor just told me that it's 50-50. But I should keep on praying that he may survive, he may, I may lose him. When I woke up after the 30 days common state, I didn't even know what happened really. He lost his memory. He can't remember anything. When I realized I couldn't use my leg, seriously, my hope was dashed. The doctor asked me that, how many kids do we have? And I said, we have two kids. 
and the doctor tell me that we will not be able to have any other kids and that's how he's going to remain on a wheelchair that he will not be able to walk on hell's cause miracle so which make me to sad I was in school when the accident happened, so when I came back, I met him in the hospital. So I realized, when I came back the next day, I saw that uh, my daddy was not like this. So I was looking that, uh, where's my daddy? I was looking for him. I only had that spinal cord is broken. My healing process is, takes more than a year. It's still ongoing till now. The business stopped. I've tried and put some things together. But I tried where I normally do my business. So they have to, the government have to come around and told us that they will have to demolish the place that we should move away from there. Well, they create another place for us while they say that we should look for certain amounts which I can get. I can't able to afford it. In the last nine years, after the accident, it's been terribly rough. I have to go to friends, and not every one of them are really helping. Sometimes some people will really mock you. My biggest concern presently is my children's education. Well, there was a time they have to stay back at home because we couldn't have uh, afford the bill of the school. I think they stay at home maybe like two, three years. When I didn't go to school, I feel bothered that the note I'm going to write is going to be much. My children are my real source of happiness. They've been a great source of support for me in the last few years that they've grown up to see me in this situation. Though they are not happy, but they've been making me happy very much. It makes me feel that other people's father can walk and he can go about doing things, but my own father can do like that. When he was working, we play football together and do all kind of sports, but now we don't play sports and we don't have time for fun again. My life right now, I don't... It has been so hard. So the records, not really pleasant. My dream is to play football with my father again. I try not to get dejected. I stay hopeful because I know that um, getting myself depressed won't help me in any way. So I won't have to the problem I already encounter. So I try to stay hopeful, to stay positive all the time. I was just so brave watching him in that video and I'm so overwhelmed by the support of his wife and his children. Our guests are here with us, Oladime Jadekune and his wife, Olaide. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thanks. How do you stay so positive? You know, I'm watching you in the video and I heard you, you know, when the cameras were off telling your wife, everything is going to be okay, everything is going to be okay. Nine years, how, how do you just stay positive and happy? Well, I think, first of all, I thank God for who he makes me to be. Secondly, I say thank you to my wife. She's been a very strong woman, brave and courageous. I'm sure maybe some other women could have left their husband all these years. But despite everything that happened, she still hangs around. Then my children too, despite the fact that uh, they've not been able to get the good lives that they would have wanted ordinarily, yet they still remain good children, obedient, very respectful. I mean, those things alone, and I have some good friends too who have been encouraging. How have you been coping, um, you know, especially regarding the fact that financially you're, you're not, you're out of a job, the market was closed down, so you can't sell goods anymore. Children were not able to go to school. How do you deal with that? Was there no one to help at all? To be factual, 
my church has been supportive. Then I have some great friends. That's the truth. What I think, it boils down to one very important thing. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap back. Somehow, while I was working, somehow nature has helped me to invest into the life of others too. Mm -hmm. And even so that I couldn't do anything for them, we just feel like, he's our friends. Don't let us just dump him now. Let's be there with, for him. So my church, my friends, they've been really great. That moment when he was in hospital and he woke up after, his, you know, woke up from a coma and had amnesia, he couldn't remember even your names. So how did you feel? What were you thinking at that point in time? I think I was just praying. I just have faith, started praying to God that God, you are the only one that can restore him. Even the doctors are just trying. That's, even the doctor really confirmed me that huh, there is nothing they can do. They, they are just trying their best. Than, the, than for me to just keep on praying to God. And I really thank God. God really answered my prayer. Vladimir, what was your lowest point? Was the day I first heard it that I will not be able to walk again. I was never the type of someone who would just sit around not doing anything. Ah, that was a serious one. It was my lowest point. It was. After the break, Airtel Touching Lives returns with a beacon of hope for the Adekunle family. Welcome back to Airtel Touching Lives. Since 2007, Oladimeji has been paralyzed from the waist down to, due to a tragic accident. Today, he's here with us with his wife and his two sons. Things look bleak. Welcome back. Thank you. I mean, there's no income coming in, you know, none at all. How desperate is your situation, lady? I'm very desperate. If you guys don't get any help, what's, what, what could happen? Oh. Live me hand. Dimeji, is there any hope? If we don't get any help, there may be. I can't see it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by the fact that you're just, you're still smiling, you know? I've never been hopeless in all my life. One of the stories that ever touched me in life is the story of Obasanjo, the former president of Nigeria. He was in prison, waiting for death, and somehow become president again. So his story has always learned, taught me something that never give up, that things can just turn around at any time. So I've always been hopeful, not going to depress, because I know depression is never going to help me in any way. Mm. So I've never been depressed. I remain hopeful always that things may turn around any time unexpectedly. David, I know that you like to play with your dad. Yes, ma'am. And um, he still watches you play football now. Yes, ma'am. What, what do you hope to see? I hope to see him walk again, walk on his feet and do some things together again. Oladimeji, I mean, your energy is just, it, um, it's brimming with so much inspiration. What would you say to Nigerians out there? You've talked so much about hope and how people need to stay hopeful however bad the situation is, what do you want to tell people who are watching? Truthfully, what I would like to tell anyone out there is that no matter what happened, stay hopeful. Hopelessness is not going to help in any way. It can only cause more problem. I will remain hopeful until I breathe my last. As long as I'm still able to talk, open my eyes, I know there will always be something new every day. Today is, today may be Monday, tomorrow will still be Tuesday, that will be a new thing. So I will always remain hopeful as long as I can still breathe. I will never lose up. I will never give up. Wow. As you know, you are on Etel Touching Lives and we're about touching lives on this program. And 
One of the things we want to do for you is to pay for an MRI to assess the level of damage to your spinal cords. And then we are going to pay for three months of physiotherapy. That would be great. Thank you very much. I'm sure within that three months, something will happen. How do you feel about sliding? I know you're overwhelmed. I can see you crying already. I'm happy. How do you feel? Oh. I feel like I'm the happiest person on it. Because I know you want to play football again with your daddy. And that's just the beginning. Because we also know that there is no income coming in and you need to feed your family and for your children to go to school. So Airtel is going to rent a shop for you for a year and fill it up with supplies so that you can get back on your feet again. Thank you. We are grateful. Thank you very much. That's a great news. At least. Thank you very much. That will relieve me of some pressure. Absolutely. I'm glad. Really glad. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the program. You guys are incredibly brave. Very, very inspiring. I love your sons. They're just, they've been playing all day and they're so happy. And that is testament to your strength, your hope, and the energy that you, you give out. And I know that you are going to be touching so many more Nigerians by just being on this show and being yourself and sharing your own story with us as well. So I want to say thank you. Thank, thank you very you much. Thanks very thank much. You. We are grateful. I really have nothing more to add than to just parrot Oladimeji's words. Stay hopeful. You all have a wonderful night. When Ogenekume Pilla Egona was just six years old, she was diagnosed with cancer of the bone. When I bumped my leg, I started to feel better, but my brain told me it was cancer. I was shocked because it's something I couldn't imagine. Her parents had to make a choice that would affect their daughter's future forever. Before now and up to now, we have no money coming in. But right now, Ethel has just given us new hope. So be hopeful more. I'm grateful for Ethel. I wanna touch your life. I wanna be the change. I'm gonna shine my.